that day, I, I will never forget that feeling. In fact, I'm getting goosebumps right now. That feeling of freedom when dad kind of jumps off the back of the M50 and I'm by myself riding that motorcycle, controlling every aspect, throttle, braking, steering. The, <laughs> the smile on my face was from ear to ear and I, I just, I'll never forget that feeling, that feeling of independence, the feeling of freedom and the feeling of fun. How cool it was to be on two wheels with an engine underneath you and you twist the throttle and it speeds up. My name is Bill Davidson. I'm the great grandson of one of our founders, William A. Davidson. My father, Willie G., was part of the company for 50 years and I am currently our vice president of the Harley Davidson Museum. We were very fortunate and very blessed. My mom and dad were, still are, phenomenal individuals, and they raised us as normal kids. <laughs> we didn't really know that we were connected to a family that was foundational to the development of Harley-Davidson and its growth. You know, we were just kids growing up. The one thing that was a little bit unique is that we knew dad worked at Harley, and we knew grandpa worked at Harley, and we knew my dad's brother, Uncle John, worked at Harley. And we thought it was really cool, because at very early ages, we were taking rides in sidecars with my dad. I was three years old. I remember taking sidecar rides and getting wrapped in blankets, because it was going into winter, and dad would take us around the neighborhood and the sidecar. Started to ride when I was six, and that was a neat deal too because it was it was just different. You know, we, we our lives are Harley Davidson. It's it's something that we truly love. We can't get enough of. And so for a family outing, we went to this state park in Wisconsin called Cave of the Mounds. And our our picnic that day involved a 1963 M50, which was our first motorcycle, my brother's sister and mine. That outing was to teach us how to ride. From there, I, I, I've ridden my entire life. I raced motocross, amateur motocross for many years. I've got a collection of motorcycles in my garage and I, uh, I can't get enough of it. and the first Harley-Davidson motorcycle rolled out of that shed in 1903. I think it's important to take yourself back in time because to think about that time frame, they were in the middle of a significant transformation in transportation. And they had this dream, this vision to basically motorized two wheels and there were a lot of people that were putting small engines on bicycle chassis and to be real honest the earliest piece of memorabilia we have in the museum is a blueprint line drawing done by bill harley in 1901 of a very small engine that was meant to go into a bicycle chassis at some point in time they said no, nope, we're going to stop here, and I have a better thought, a better idea, which was to design a engine and chassis as a complete unit rather than a small engine and a bicycle chassis and marrying the two. They thought that by designing it from the ground up, both the chassis and the motor, it would fit, the motor would fit in the chassis better the dependability and the reliability would be better. And it was a better design of getting the horsepower, the three horsepower from that first motor to through the chassis to the rear wheel to the ground. Again, taking yourselves back to that time frame, you know, these guys are all excited about this 
vision, this opportunity, this this potential strength. And so I, I think they were all helping where needed. Bill Harley was the engineer. My great-grandfather was, uh, he oversaw the manufacturing aspects of, of the product. Arthur and Walter were involved with sales and marketing and that kind of thing. Walter Davidson was the first president. Uh, we incorporated in 1907, and he was president to 1942. And that's when my grandfather, William H. Davidson, became president until 1972. You know, a lot of the philosophies that the founders put in place are absolutely true today. You know, the being close to the customer, understanding what the customers wanted or didn't want, making sure the customers were always happy. And if there were issues, resolving those issues as quickly as possible. Riding to the different events with customers, going to dealerships for open houses. I mean, we're, we're doing all that stuff today. Our, our employees, our executives, myself, Karen, my sister, we're, we're, we love going to events and talking to customers and riding with thousands of customers like in things like the parades that we have for the homecomings here in Milwaukee for the 100th anniversary, the 105th, the 110th, and our last one in 2018, the 115th. I joined the company in 1984. I joined to develop a corporate demo ride program because in 1984, we were really struggling as a company. 13 investors, including my dad was one of the 13 that bought the company back in 1981. And we were trying to rebuild the company and get back to profitability after we bought the company back from AMF, American Machine and Foundry. And I was very, very lucky to be hired because we really weren't hiring and we didn't have the money to hire people. But this was a marketing initiative to show people that our product that we used to have uh, that had some quality issues had completely changed because in 1984 we introduced the Evolution motor and that was a brand new motor for us after the shovel head. And so the demo ride program was an awesome tool to actually have customers put their legs over these things and take them for a test ride to see for themselves that seat of the pant feel, if you will, what a great improvement the Evolution engine was. And we had to do it because our quality had suffered quite a bit and we were digging out. So. I developed the demo ride program and I ran around the country for a couple of years giving our existing customers and potential new customers test rides on these bikes. And it was awesome because a lot of the people had a perception of the Harley Davidson product as being inferior and didn't have good quality and you put them on a new bike in 1984. and let them take it for a test ride and they'd be coming back with smiles from year to year you know this is phenomenal you guys did a great job so it was a really positive environment and a lot of fun from there i moved into our sales promotions and advertising uh, i did our motor clothes catalog uh, design layout photo shoot from there i moved into the harley owners group i ran worldwide hog for many many years I went over to Europe for about four months and got hog started over in Europe which was just a blast riding around Europe and meeting dealers and customers and figuring out our game plan over in Europe for the Harley Owners Group and then after the Harley Owners Group I was asked to oversee our product planning process from a marketing perspective that was fun because I was working directly with motorcycle development 
So styling, engineering, manufacturing, and it, it was a great, that was 15 years of my career. That was during the time of when we took Dyna to the new chassis and we did the Fat Bob and the Street Bob. The V-Rod came out when I was in product development. The Street Glide, a lot of very, very, very successful motorcycles, which I'm very proud of. The other great part of that is I got to work with Willie very, very closely on styling and his whole team, Louis Nets and Ray Dre and Frank Savage. And then after product development, I was asked to run our core customer marketing. And that's when I became a vice president of the company. From core customer marketing, I was approached and asked if I would like to run the museum. And it took me about a half a second to say, I'd love to. I've been there ever since. Obviously, society has changed. It was a lot different when I was starting on that M50 at the Cave of the Mound State Park. As nowadays, I don't know if you could even legally do that. <laughs> the neat thing is, is that the experience and the thrill and that sense of freedom has not changed. That sense of nature being exaggerated, that has not changed. The phenomenal experience of seeing the world, wherever you might be, from the seat of a motorcycle, especially a Harley Davidson because of how it works, it is a, an unbelievable experience. And I would encourage anybody to not miss this opportunity of seeing their surroundings or other parts of the U.S. or other parts of the world from the seat of a Harley Davidson. And there's so many stories about how people got involved in the sport and they're like children at Christmas. They just can't get over it. And it, it's pretty cool. That's the one thing the world of Harley Davidson has that no other motorcycle brand has. And that's the passion and the commitment, the brotherhood and the sisterhood of our riders is, is something that I have never ever seen anywhere else. Certainly we have the richest heritage in the motorcycle industry. The, the different chapters, you know, even before 1903, as I was talking about earlier, 1901, that oldest piece of memorabilia in the museum, all the way through to today, the stories, the hurdles we've had to get over, the successes we've achieved, the people that we have fulfilled dreams for, that giving them that experience of freedom and the open road and the thrill of it. it it's, it's amazing. And I, I truly believe that history is amazing. You know, every day that goes by is another day of history. And so to have this wealth of 117 years, all the memorabilia, documents, photos, advertisements, motorcycles 117 years of that under one roof is pretty incredible and what's even more incredible than the physical items are the stories about our employees our dealers and our customers related to all that memorabilia it's an unbelievable wealth and value that the motor company has. And I can assure you there, there is not another motorcycle company in the world that has come and gone or that still exists that can talk to this level of depth about 117 years of continuous history. We all need to be very proud. 
you know, this Harley family of customers and dealers and employees, it's, it's their museum, right? It's because over time they have helped make it available, make it happen. And so it's an honor for me and a real privilege to work with a, a talented team of people that oversee basically the soul and essence of our brand at that museum. Thank you.